Okay, so here we have a point light source, and it's been animated to move back behind our objects. Alright, pretty simple. Now, to add a flare to a light track, you simply select the light track and then click the Add Flare button. It adds a default flare to your light track, which you see right here, but of course you can always change that. So up in our Flare Swatches bin, you can drag until you find one that you like, and then just click on it and drag it down into the swatch panel. So first thing is that this is an awfully doggone big flare. So we've got flare scale and you can adjust that pulling it in and out just scrubbing it until it's the right size for the project that you're working on. Okay now you see this is a real 3D flare. It's back there it's lighting up our lights and it's being obscured as it moves behind the objects. Okay so the next item down says randomize scale. This one's used when you have a whole bunch of lights with a whole bunch of flares and you want everyone to be slightly different in size. Okay, makes it much faster. You can just dial in an adjustment and it will pick a new value for every flare that you have. The next thing is brightness. You can of course dial this thing to be a little bit dimmer or brighter just by changing the value right here. Now the first one dealing with size is reflection scale. This particular flare doesn't have a reflection. Uh, here's one that does. So if I replace it with this guy you can see that um, when we move it off to the side there are all the reflections right there. Okay, so reflection scale will let you make these smaller or bigger very simply like that. Okay, pretty simple. Now the next one over here, here, here tell you what, let's go back to prom night and, uh, and adjust that, there we go. Okay, so the next thing that we have is uh, 3D flares. Now notice that 3D flares uh, doesn't mean the same thing in a 3D program that it does in a compositing program. See, flares are always 3D, right? And they'll always obscure uh, or not based upon the settings that you use. But what 3D is referring to in this sense is the fact that they are actually, um, uh, they get bigger and smaller based upon how close the light source is to the objects, uh, sorry, to the camera. So you see as we move them far away, the light source gets smaller, the flare gets smaller. As we bring them closer, the light source gets bigger, so the flares get bigger. Okay, so that's 3D flares. Scale with brightness, we're going to come back to in just a second, as we are with auto adjust super sampling. Now coming on over here, here's adjustments, size adjustments for individual parts of the flare. So spike scale, this will make the spikes bigger or smaller without affecting the glow. You'll see the glow is still there, now the spikes are able to be controlled on their own. Glow scale lets you do the same thing with glow, so you can fine tune the look of that without having to go into the flare editor to do it. The next thing we've got here are disappears off screen and disappears behind objects. Now as you can see these are set to disappear. Uh, if I turn these guys off the flare never changes. You see it just stays on there and it appears it's still there even as it goes off screen. Okay, So if I turn that one on just like you would expect it disappears as it goes off screen. When I turn this one on it's going to disappear as it goes behind other objects. Now notice that when we're in preview mode like this, the light is either here or it's not. The, and I want to point out that that's not always how it looks when it's rendered in its final form. Okay, so here we just did a render test so you can see it's still there a little bit. It's dimmer, it's much dimmer, but it's not completely gone. And that's based upon this yellow circle right here, which is our source size. Okay, this is the source of the light itself. So if I make this much bigger, and hit render test, you see that a very little of that source has been obscured by the edge of that A, so our light doesn't really dim hardly at all. If I make this source size much smaller, um, it's going to be completely occluded by the edge of that A, so when we hit render test, you'll see that it's completely gone. Now, here's an interesting thing you can do with source size. Um, as the lights go behind other objects, the light will get, the flare will get dimmer or brighter based on how much of this circle is occluded. Okay? Now, when you combine this idea with this one right here, scale with brightness, what you end up with is this. See, here's, here's that same flare with scale with brightness on, and if we turn this off, here's what it looks like when it's turned off. You see, the size is totally different. 
So when the occlusion happens, if scale with brightness is turned off, the flare just gets brighter and dimmer. When scale with brightness is turned on, not only does it get dimmer, but it also gets smaller. So you end up with a completely different look. This one causes sort of a winking effect where the, the, uh, the size of the flare will get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. Uh, when this is turned off, it gets dimmer, which oftentimes looks like it's getting smaller too, but not as much. So one's sort of a flicker effect, one is a winking effect. Very cool. Play with them until you find which one you like for every occasion. Okay? So now uh, we've got that, we've got this. Um, as the flares do get obscured, if the if the um, if it's not if it's too abrupt, you can increase the inclusion samples. Right now, four means it's going to it's going to sample at four by four, so you get 16 samples. If you bump this up to eight, you're going to get 84, uh, sorry, 64 samples, uh, which means that as it starts to dim down or dim back up, you see it's much smoother. Uh, now that may not make a difference depending on how fast your lights are going. So, say for instance they go off the edge here, um, and uh, in this frame it's still there. In this frame it's probably mostly gone. See it dims down very very quickly. If you're moving too fast, you'll never see any difference. But just realize that if you're moving the flare nice and slowly you'll probably need to turn up the occlusion samples from four to a higher number just so that you get a much nicer series of uh, a gradation ramp as it goes in or it goes out. Okay, very simple, very good stuff. So let's see, spike scale, did we do that one? Yeah, we did that one. Uh, spike scale, spike rotation, of course, lets you fine tune where the spikes are. Now, if, if spikes are set to be randomized and you've got another value turned on here, which is called make each flare unique, that is going to pick a different value for you for every set of spikes. So you may not need to adjust the spike rotation or not. Okay, totally up to you. Let's put that back to zero. And uh, let's see, that's pretty much it. Now, a couple last little things to mention here are the auto adjust super sampling. And this is usually used when you've got very large uh, flares and you start to see uh, sort of like uh, stair steps right there in the flares or if you've got lots of tiny thin little lines. The thin little lines really show this up. Usually when you've got big big nice big um, streaks like this, big spikes, you probably not need to turn this on. Uh, just be careful when you turn on auto adjust super sampling it will slow things down if they get too big. So as, as it gets bigger and bigger it will increase the super sampling so you never see any of the artifacts but just be aware that that may slow your rendering down. So try to keep that one turned off if at all possible. Okay, last thing we're going to mention is the effect of um, visibility on spotlights. Now right now we're using, um, you see we're using point light sources, so they're visible from all angles. The flares are always going to be visible no matter what direction uh, you look at them with, right? Okay, but with spotlights it's a different story. So we have these little guys right here called visibility angles. Now, if I come up here to our lights and I change this from point lights to spotlights, uh, and say we set this to 60 degrees. Okay, so what we have now, you see, is we have a light source with a cone angle of 60 degrees. So this cone angle may or may not show its flare depending upon whether it's pointed at the light source or not. So you see here, it's not showing the flare now it's ramping up and then it ramps out as it as it goes past. So the ramp up and the ramp out is what we're concerned with with this visibility angle. Now let me show you what's going to happen if we take the visibility feather. This is the angle which at this when it's set to 60 it's going to perfectly match the the circle that you see right here and this is the feather. So if I turn this down to zero what you're going to see is that as it comes into view, see it's going to be in view when the edge of that cone meets the point of the light. So right there in one frame you see it just turns on. There's no ramping up at all. It just it just turns on or turns off. Get that? That's because the feather is set to zero. Uh, if you have feather set really really high um, it's sometimes hard to see 
uh, the light. So let me show you what's going to happen here. We're going to take this. Let's bump this up to maybe, um, uh, let's say, four lights. Okay, and I'll turn off these guys because we uh, these because we don't really need those, and uh, show you what's going to happen. So here we have. Um, a bunch of lights. You see this one's pointed almost right at the camera and they gradually get further and further away from the camera. Okay, so now you see what's happening is that it's fading out as the as the visibility starts to get closer to the edge. See, remember right there, it's just barely at the edge. Here it's inside the feather area a little bit. Here it's probably totally inside the feather area. So you see these lights are going to ramp up and ramp down based upon that visibility feather right that's that guy right there so that's a very cool thing to keep in mind um, if you have a nice feather with this you'll get these things working on and off flickering on and off it causes lots of great um, motion in the lights just because they ramp on and ramp off without you having to do anything about it here's what they looks like what it looks like with scale with brightness turned on if we turn this on then you'll see that um, you see the sky as it's almost dim out it's also very small so you see here they're getting bigger and smaller as the lights are getting brighter or dimmer okay again it's causing the wink effect rather than the uh, bright and dark dim effect okay so there you go that's a little sampler of um, of everything dealing with size and scale for uh, and visibility for flares and how to get them all working